guys, Sam Gupta here, the founder at Tenex for the Kids and an official Guinness record holder for the youngest computer programmer in the world. And today, you are gonna be learning about class 6 fundamentals of computer that is chapter 1 of your book, Trackpad. And this is on page number 7. Alright, so without any delay, let's get started. So we'll start with the page number 8. Right, so in this fast paced world, computers have become a necessity. Right, Com today you can't live without computers. We are dependent on computers to a great extent. Their invention has made our lives easier as they help us carry out several tasks be it making an airline reservation or paying electrical bills, making railway reservations, online bank transactions, etc. In this chapter, we will learn about categories of computers, right? Different types of computers. Let us recall the journey of computers through different generations. So there are different generations of computers. Like first you had those button phones. Now they are the touch phones, right? And phones keep on evolving. So similarly, computers have evolved since uh, in generations, right? So uh, the evolution of computers has we we'll, uh, we are on the topic evolution of computers on page number eight. So this evolution of computers has been classified into generations. Let us learn about them in I in detail. First, we'll see about the first generation computers. Th those are vacuum tube based computers, right? We will look about vacuum tube based computers, right? So uh, the first generation computers use vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory. They were extremely large in size as the space of a room, right? So the first generation computers used vacuum tubes for, uh, tubes for circuitry. Uh, then they didn't have those uh, uh, easy and small resources and technology, right? Uh, they had big solutions, right? And uh, uh, the computers used to be very large, right? So for circuits, they use vacuum tubes and magnetic drums for memory. Like uh, over here, we have a hard drive, hard drive from for memory. That time we had magnetic drums for memory. They were extremely large in size as a space of a room, right? They occupied the space of a room. So the second generation computers that are transistor based computers so in the 1960s you have to remember this date this date can come in the 1960s transistor based computers replaced vacuum tubes marking them as a second generation of computers right the transistors were far superior to vacuum tubes which allowed the computer to become smaller faster cheaper more efficient and reliable right so remember the smaller because vacuum tubes are like this big and a uh, transistor base are this small right so smaller the computers are smaller right they were faster right because the vacuum tube uh, based uh, computers like were the first generation computers and it was not so efficient right so it was faster it's cheaper because vacuum based computers uh, will uh, uh, vacuum tube based computers were very expensive right because they had vacuum tubes right so obviously it's a bigger thing and it should be ex expensive right so these were cheaper transistor based computers they were more efficient right so they work more smoothly right and reliable right they were reliable these were also the first computers that stored instructions in their memory. So, uh, like we have the RAM, right? Uh, right now in computers you have RAM, right? Random access memory where uh, mem instructions are saved, right? Some uh, it's also called the cache where uh, some some things are saved, right? Temporarily. Similarly. Uh, the second generation uh, computers um, stored instructions in their memory, temporary things in their memory, which move from a magnetic drum to magnetic core technology. So first we had the magnetic drums for memory. Now we have in second generation, generation we have the magnetic core technology. Now the third generation computers that were integrated circuit based computers, right? So this generation of computers were built using integrated circuits. Small transistors were used 
placed on silicon chips called semiconductors which drastically increase the speed and efficiency of computers right you have to remember one thing that is semiconductors right the silicon chips right the silicon chips were called semiconductors so this line uh, on page number eight small transistors were placed on silicon chips called semiconductors you have to remember this much for the third generation computers and as you can see we are slowly moving on like uh, today also we have circuits in the computer uh, so we are slowly slowly moving on to our generation right we are coming closer and closer to our generation now the fourth generation computers that were microprocessor based computers so you have micro uh, microprocessors in your computers right so uh, similarly in the fourth uh, generation uh, computers we have microprocessor based computers in this generation computer use compo components like a microprocessor where micro refers to the physical size of the component so microprocessors were very fast efficient but micro it represents the size right it was very small and slowly and slowly the computers are starting to get cheaper right and smaller and uh, easy to use and easy to carry with you so uh, so a microprocessor is an integrated chip on which the entire cpu is fabricated so this is very important guys a microprocessor is an integrated chip an integrated chip means that is put into your computer integrated chips means that a microprocessor is put into your computer it already comes in your computer you don't have to uh, separately buy it right on which the entire cpu that is the control unit and alu is fabricated right so cpu is the brain of the computer as you have read and all so uh, this small microprocessor had the full cpu on it right the full cpu was fabricated on it right so very cool four generation my uh, uh, computers that were microprocessor based computers and uh, we before moving to the fifth generation let's recap we have the first generation computers that were vacuum tube based computers second generation computers that were transistor based computers third generation com uh, computers which are integrated circuit based computers and fourth generation computers where it was microprocessor based computers not the fifth generation computers the development of fifth generation computers is underway so they have not come yet the fourth generation computers are here for us like this macbook i'm recording on this is a fourth generation computer fifth generation computers are yet to come so the development of fifth generation computers is underway what sets this generation of computers apart is the infusion of artificial intelligence very confusing statement in your book uh, but um, basically it means that uh, these computers will be operated by, uh, with artificial intelligence right very simple uh, developers are aiming at building computers that are capable of organizing themselves right so uh, this is an important line developers are aiming at building a computer right that are capable that are capable of organizing themselves so they can organize themselves right like how everything should work in the computer what should be saved where and all so uh, we won't exactly know what uh, these fifth generation computers are before they come right so we can't anticipate what uh, we will get but you have to remember this that these computers are based on artificial intelligence and if a question comes like what what is the difference between the fifth generation computers and today's generation computers so today's generation computers are the fourth generation computers so you basically basically have to classify the differences between the fourth generation computers and the fifth generation computers right very 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 cool now let's move on to categories of computers right now did, uh, we are on page number nine uh, everybody so come to page number nine nowadays different types of computers are used that can be categorized on their type size speed processing power and price let us learn about these categories in detail first type so you have to remember these the type the size 
the speed, the processing power, and the price. Right? Pretty good. What type of computer it can be? It could be analog, digital, and all, all, all. Uh, what size it can be? It could be big, like the vacuum tube-based computers. It could be smaller, like our today's fourth generation computers. Uh, in speed, it, there are very fast computers like your gaming computers that come today, those are very fast. Whereas our vacuum tube based computers, they were very, very, very slow. Next, you have processing power, how fast something can, a uh, computer can process something, right? So processing power, uh, like uh, uh, in the fourth generation computers, uh, the processing power was less. In the fourth generation computer, the processing power will be much more. And the fifth generation computers, we don't know. We are yet to be surprised. And finally, the price. The fourth generation computers were very, very, very expensive and big because they were the size of your room. Just look around your room and see what all is there. And now imagine a computer of the size of this room. Imagine how big they were and how expensive they would be. So for, first let's talk about the type on page number nine. On the basis of the type, computers can be classified into three categories, which are analog, digital, and hybrid computers. Let us learn about them. Now the analog computer. It refers to a computer that operates by measuring instead of counting. It measures the continuously, the continuously changeable physical quantities like voltage, pressure, water flow, etc. This type of computer generally displays the output in the form of a graph. Examples of analog computers are mercury thermometer, speed, speedometers in cars and old radios. Right, so basically uh, what they are saying that uh, this computer operates by measuring instead of counting, right? So uh, today's... Uh, these analog computers uh, operate by measuring instead of counting. So you have only have to rem uh, remember the first two lines, right? First uh, two lines. It refers to a computer that operates by measuring instead of counting, right? And it measures the continuously changeable physical quantities like voltage, pressure, water flow, etc. Right? So uh, and uh, they give in graph, right? You, you would have seen graphs on some uh, computers, like uh, for example, your uh, mercury thermometer. This mercury that slides up to tell you the fever if you have any right so similarly uh, it's kind of a graph right it's flowing up right to tell you the fever so it's a graph so this uh, type of computer analog computer shows your output in a graph pretty good digital computers it refers to a computer that uses digits binary numbers zeros and ones so uh, uh, in the analog computer you had no binary right it measures instead of counts it measures instead of counting, right? But in digital computers, you use binary, that is zeros and ones to generate, process and display data, right? To generate, process and display data. The results produced by digital computers are more accurate than that of analog computers, obviously. All the modern computers that we use like desktops, laptops and smartphones are examples of digital computers. Some of the examples of digital computers are digital watches, digital thermometers, and electrical meters, etc. Right? So digital computers, basically today's computers are digital computers that work on binary zeros and ones. This much you have to remember and then you can remember the examples like laptops, smartphones, etc. Finally, we have the hybrid computers in the types of computers. It refers to a computer that provides the functionality of both an analog and a digital computer. You read about analog, you read about digital. Hybrid is a mixture of both analog and digital. While uh, uh, a digital computer while processing and displaying data, while processing and displaying data, it uses the speed of an analog computer and accuracy from a digital computer. So the speed of an analog computer, I think, is greater and the accuracy of a digital computer is greater. So it mix the, mixes the, those two technologies to kind of create a very fast and efficient computer. 
this type of computer are usually are generally used in scientific research right scientific research and specialized applications heartbeat measuring machine is a common example of the hybrid computer you see now that those graphs and all 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 that measures the heartbeat that is basically a hybrid computer you have to remember this much that is a mixture of analog and a digital computer right and uh, it uses the speed of an analog computer and accuracy of a digital computer computer right and then an example now size speed and processing and cost right on page number nine you have the next topic size speed processing and cost so on the basis of size size speed processing and cost computers can be classified categorized as follows you have microcomputers you have a desktop computer you can have a laptop tablet smartphone mini computers mainframe computers supercomputers etc right so these are the one two three four five six seven eight yeah these are the eight types of computers and i think uh four of these will be new new to you microcomputers mini computers mainframe computers and supercomputers so before coming to microcomputers we will uh, first on page number 10 look at desktop computers so a desktop is prime uh, you all know a desktop a desktop is a primarily is primarily used in offices and at homes it is designed to fit comfortably on a desk so as uh, these are like desktop you have a gaming uh, pc and all 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 so desktop is prime uh, primarily used at offices and at homes right so if you want a permanent setup you have a desktop it is designed to comfortably fit on a desk right so on your working desk a desktop can com uh, comfortably fit next a laptop a laptop is very similar to a desktop but it is portable computer which can, you can keep on your lap Right now, my uh, this is a laptop which I'm not keeping on my lap, but um, <laughs> this is a laptop, right? So it's a portable computer. You can carry a laptop anywhere. Therefore, you are not restricted to one place while working on a desktop computer. So as I said, desktop computers are restricted to one place. If you want a permanent setup, go on with the desktop computer. But if you want a portable uh, computer, use a laptop, a tablet. A tablet is a kind of microcomputer. So now we have done desktop and com uh, desktop computers and laptops. Let's move on to microcomputer on your page number nine. So microcomputers were earlier termed as personal computers. A personal computer consists of CPU, computer memory, input and output devices. Four things: CPU, computer memory, input and output devices. There are various microcomputers available nowadays. Let us discuss about them, right? So all these computers that you are reading about are microcomputers, right? So pretty cool. We should have done those first, uh, my about microcomputers first, but pretty cool. These all desktop computer, laptop, tablet, smartphone are microcomputers. So we have read about desktop computer and laptop. Let's read about the tablet. A tablet is a kind of a microcomputer that offers new features to IT it savvy world like touch screen right so mostly laptops now have touch screen but some laptops and desktops don't have touch screen so tablets are always touch screen it is available in a variety of sizes and have an inbuilt virtual keyboard and a battery so they are available in many sizes like you have the ipad pro that is the biggest uh, then you have the ipad mini that is the smallest so it is uh, available on in many sizes right and uh, when you uh, like uh, click on an input field in an ipad the virtual keyboard will come up right so that's the virtual keyboard and there's already a battery uh, that you can recharge when the uh, when it uh, when the ipad runs out of battery pretty good next we have the smartphones it uh, it's a mobile phone built on a mobile operating system Right. So there are uh, operating systems like operating systems are those which are running on your devices to uh, work around your uh, system. Right. So, for example, you have Mac OS. It is a operating system so that you can uh, use your Mac, save files uh, and uh, all, all, all. You have the Windows uh, operating system, right, uh, where uh, you can work with Windows applications and all. You have the Linux operating system where you can work with Linux applications. So there are many operating systems uh, which you can install to work 
with your computer or laptop or tablet or mobile phone so mobile phone uh, are built on mobile operating systems it provides like ios right it provides additional features to perform day-to-day -day tasks including sending mails and ac accessing to the internet basically tablo tablets and smartphones are very similar right uh, uh, but the main difference is that most tablets don't have a sim uh, smartphones mostly have a sim and uh, the smartphones are smaller and easy to carry tablets are a little bigger and heavier and a little bit difficult to carry pretty cool next we are on mini computers mini computers are more powerful than micro computers these desktop computers laptops tablets and smartphones my micro computers mini computers are much more powerful than micro computers they are bigger in size and faster in processing speed they can support several users working in at the same time on the same machine which means they support a multi-user environment pretty simple you on a mini computer multiple people can work together like on a laptop you will work yourself right no other person can work with you right so uh, similarly on mini computers sorry diff uh, differing on mini computers you can't uh, you will uh, what am i saying you uh, you can work with many people right together on one mini computer some common examples are hcl magnum and wax 7500 so these you have to remember these are important hcl magnum and wax 7500 all right pretty cool next you have the mainframe computers right mainframe computers is a uh, on page number 10 a mainframe computer is a massive computer that occupies a huge space and often fills an entire room like you read about vacuum tube based computers which occupy the a whole room mainframe computers also occupy the whole room but one thing is different in mainframe computers they use today's binary technology that is the digital technology that is used in digital computers whereas your vacuum tube based computers were very old they use vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory you have to remember this uh, they can uh, come a difference between a mainframe computer and a vacuum tube based computer right so what you will have to write uh, uh, you will have to see about that a mainframe computer is a massive computer that occupies a huge space and often fills an entire room. It can store an eno enormous amount of information and a design for multitasking with several users working simultaneously. Mainframe computers usually have several terminals connected to them. They are ma so, uh, like in my mini computers, multiple users can work on them sim uh, simultaneously. The uh, computers usually have several terminals connected to them. They are manufactured for commercial applications and other large-scale computing purposes. So these are very, very large computers for very, very large storages and purposes, right? And like these big companies, Google and all, they, they have a lot of users coming to them, millions, billions of users coming to them daily right so i think they must be operating on a mainframe computer or even a supercomputer a supercomputer consists of a large number of processors and also occupies a huge amount of space it is very powerful machine for performing complex scientific calculations like calcu calculating the value of pi right a very big value if you want a very very big value you will use a supercomputer it is very powerful machine for performing complex scientific calculations calculations that a postal computer performs in three weeks can be performed by a supercomputer within a minute so if you if it takes your uh what do you say if you if it takes your laptop to download a file three weeks your supercomputer will do it in one minute look at the difference it's absolutely absolutely cool supercomputers are also used in the field of creating animated graphics and conducting nuclear research some examples of supercomputers are cray xmp24 param 9000 param and anurag so uh, you can remember these three 
param 9000 param and anurag so if you remember anurag uh, right you should not remember anurag then you have you can remember param and then uh, similarly you have param 9000 so these are supercomputers now you have other types of computers apart so nasa will be using i think supercomputers and all apart from uh, the types of computers that we have discussed in the previous section some other types of computers are embedded computers and ha handheld computers let us learn about these computers in detail so most of these computers you must have heard of right that we are going to see uh, in the coming section so first of uh, first of all uh, what is an embedded computer an embedded computer is a special type of microprocessor based system so here we did microprocessor based computers that, those were four generation computers similarly uh, um, uh, embedded computer is seeing a microprocessor based computer that is developed for performing a specific task right so a specific task uh, laptops and uh, computers uh, uh, desktop computers can uh, uh, perform many tasks you can work on files videos and many things you can work on the web and all but some embedded computers are only uh, there to do one task for example a digital camera on page number 11 digital camera digital camera is one of the most commonly used embedded computers due to the use of embedded computers cameras have become very smart and provide lots of features that were not present in older cameras the main function of a camera is to capture photos and shoot videos you all know that it is all it also has a memory to store the captured photos and videos and i'm sure you all have, must have a camera and know how it works so nothing new for you till now but this atm that is automated teller machine is new for you automated teller machine atm is another example of the embedded computers that allows to withdraw money from our bank account from anywhere and any time it's very simple it allows us to withdraw money this much you if you write this you'll get full marks then you have a microwave you all must be having it at home the microwave that we use at our home is an, also an example of the embedded computer that allows us to warm and cook food to warm and cook food microwave it allows us to warm and cook food this much definition for microwave you are all set handheld computers a handheld computer is a type of computer that can easily be stored in our pocket and used by holding it in our hands. These were embedded computers. Digital camera, ATM and microwave were digital, uh, embedded computers. Now, handheld computers, uh, we have smartphone, personal digital assistant, smart a smartwatch and gaming consoles. So, uh, you just have to say a handle computer is a type of computer that can easily be stored in our pocket and used by holding it in our hands. This much you're done. Most of the handle computers have a touch screen in which we input data by using our fingers, right? So, uh, as we saw, tablets and smartphones are touch screen microcomputers. So, handle uh, computers are mostly touch screen, like a smartphone. So we read about smartphones, but let's just read it once again. Smartphone is a type of mobile phone that provides the faci facilities of a computer. It has a touch screen and a rechargeable battery. We all know, know what a smartphone is, dude. A smartphone provides the features of an earlier cell phone and also some advanced features similar to a computer. Very, very, very cool. Now let's move on to page number 12. Uh, that is PDA, that is Personal Digital Assistant. Personal Digital Assistant is a handheld computer that has a touch screen and allows us to organize our daily routine uh, works like schedules. Right, so um, PDAs are not really used today, uh, in today's date, but they are used in many places. Right, so Personal Digital Assistant is basically uh, to store your to do's lists, daily routine works like schedules, calendars, and address books information. It also has a pen-like stylus. So you have a stylus which allows us to give, give input. It can also ac accept handwritten input directly from the touch screen. So basically it is a personal digital assistant. 
uh, is a handheld computer that has a touch screen and allows us to organize our daily routine box like schedules, calendars and address book information. This much you have to write. You can also remember it has a pen like stylus. That's your choice. But this much if you write, you're all set. Next we have a smartwatch. A smartwatch is a comp you all must be having one, right? Or your parents must be having one. A smartwatch is a computing device which you can wear on your wrist, right? Like any other watch, you can wear a smartphone or a smartwatch on your wrist. It provides features of an older watch and some advanced features of a smartphone like connecting to the internet, using mobile apps and making phone or phone calls, right? Uh, you have same smartwatches where your sim can be put in and you can call people, right? Pretty cool. Uh, one of the most common examples is your Apple Watch. Finally, we have the gaming consoles. The gaming console, also called a video game console, is a computing device specially designed to play video games. Your, like your PS4 that I also have installed here. PS4 Pro. You can see the controller here. Yeah. Uh, PS4 uh, like a PS4 or, or PS5 now the PS5 has come we can connect the gaming console with tele uh, with the television to play games on television some commonly uh, used examples of the gaming console are Sony PlayStation like I told you P PS4 Nintendo GameCube Nintendo Wii etc Nintendo has released a lot of versions Nintendo if you remember it's all right Nintendo PlayStation or PS right and these are gaming consoles where you can play video games connecting to the uh, uh, TV so you just have to remember uh, consoles which can be connected to your TV to play video games are gaming consoles and then you can give the example PS4 or PS5 Nintendo etc now devices of a computer on page number 12 we have devices of a computer as you know a computer works in three steps input process output Input is any data or instruction entered into a computer. The input devices allow, help us to enter data and give commands to the computer. You don't have to write this. To, if you only write input is any data or instruction entered into a computer, for input you'll get full marks. Process refers to the work done by the computer with the help of the processor. Right? So process refers to the work done by the computer with the help of a processor. Pretty cool. And finally we have output refers to the result. So you don't need to write with the help of, right? If you just say process refers to the work done by the computer, you will get uh, full marks. And then output refers to the result that has been processed by the computer. Or you can say output refers to the result given by the computer. So we use different types or uh, different devices for each step. Let us learn about these devices in details. So we have input devices, we have processing devices, and we have output devices we will see all about all of these in detail so uh, we have already read about some uh, on page number 12 we have already read about some of the commonly used input devices in earlier classes let us now learn about a few more here so now let's move on to page number 13 G a gesture recognition camera so a gesture recognition camera is a motion input device right so this camera is a motion input device it is recording me right so this is an input device. Motion input lets us uh, lets the user guide on screen elements using air gestures. Air gestures involve moving your body or a handheld input device through the air. With motion input, a device containing a camera detects your gestures and then converts them into a digital signal that is sent to a computer or game device. For example, gamers can pull their arm back to throw a javelin in the game. So a uh, very complicated example here if you uh, this is a gesture recognition camera so it's actually quite cool and like you have the Apple TV if you have games when you uh, have gesture like this you can play tennis right proper tennis so a gesture recognition camera you can see is an input device that uh, recognizes the gestures given by the user and according to uh, that uh, uh, do, does some task. For example, a javelin thrown, uh, 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 thrown by giving a gesture like this, right? So, uh, for example, you can say uh, moving your hand for a javelin throw, right? Pretty good. Next, you have barcode reader. A barcode reader or a barcode scanner is an electronic device used for reading printed barcodes. 
barcode readers consist of a light source lens and light sensor that help them scan these codes so pretty cool barcode readers are those to uh, the is an electronic device used for reading printed barcodes this much uh, the they consist of a light source lens and a light sensor that helps them scan these codes so uh, you just have to write the barcode reader or barcode scanner is an uh, electronic device used for reading printed barcodes this much only then you have omr optical mark reader so optical mark reader is an input device used for capturing human mark data in a document forms such as tests and surveys surveys OMR is used in schools, businesses, and healthcare agencies for data input processes and reducing input error. So, uh, it is basically optical mark reader is an input device. We all know that for capturing human mark data in the document in document forms such as tests and surveys. This much you have to remember that is used for capturing human mark data in document forms such as tests and surveys. This much. Uh, only and for example it is used in schools businesses and healthcare agencies all right next you have the OCR don't get confused between OMR and OCR there can come a difference between OMR and OCR OMR is optical mark reader and OCR is an optical character reader it is used to carry out mechanical or electronic translation of the handwritten typewritten or printed text into machine encoded text it is widely used to convert books and documents into electronic files so like you have a pen type thing which scans line by line and uh, uh, transfer it to your electronic device right handwritten or anything it is widely used to convert this OCR can also be attached to scanners and mobile phones so very cool OCRs are very cool optical mark reader is basically a uh, an input device used for capturing human mark data in document forms such as tests and service you have to remember this much and finally you have the magnetic ink character reader so magnetic ink character reader is an input device that reads special characters that are printed using a special magnetic ink on checks like check number bank code or branch code right MICRs are scan this information and are thus capable of sorting checks so basically the, the uh, uh, is an input device that reads special characters that are printed using a special magnetic ink on checks like check number so it is basically used uh, uh, MICR is an input device that uh, reads special characters that are printed using a special magnetic ink this much you have to remember and done for uh, next you have processing devices so central processing unit is a processing device of a, com uh, co a computer right it is also known as the brain of the computer the cpu it performs all the calculations and processes data uh, and processes processes data into information it receives input from input devices processes them and sends the proce uh, process result to the out output unit a cpu consists of three units arithmetic logic unit control unit and memory unit so here uh, uh, you will mostly only get defined cpu so it is basically a processing device of a computer it is also known as the brain of the computer it uh, uh, does all the calculations and processes data into information uh, it, it receives input from input devices processes them and sends the process result as uh, as the output unit so as we read the three processes input process output the uh, cpu processes right so the cpu gets the input processes it and then sends the output to any output device right so remember this cpu is the processing device of a computer it is the brain it processes the information received by the input and sends the uh, processed uh, information as the output this much you have to remember and you are all good in this you are cpu you have three things arithmetic logic unit the uh, alu performs arithmetic comparison and logical operation so all your maths and all science and all will be handled with the arithmetic logic unit then you have the control unit the control unit or cu controls all the functions of a computer it also checks the result given by alu so it uh, like basically opening files closing them saving them all is handled by the control unit 
and the memory unit. The memory unit holds the data that needs to be processed as well as the data that has been processed by the CPU. So it holds some temporary data that needs to be processed or has been processed by the CPU. Finally, we have output devices in this chapter and then this chapter is over. So I've already learned about some basic output devices like monitors, printers, etc. Let us now learn about few more output devices like a printer, a laser printer and an inkjet printer. You have the dot matrix printer and then you have a plot. So you have two output devices given here, printer and plotter, right? So we'll see both and their types. So a printer is an output device that gives output on a paper. We know that the result printed on a paper is called a hard copy or printout. It is called a hard copy or a printout. Printers can be classified into two categories, categories impact and non-impact. Printers that have direct contact between the print head and the paper are known as impact printers. We are on page number 14 guys. The printers that do not have direct contact between the printer, uh, print head and the paper are known as non-impact printers. So basically you have to learn two things. Print, uh, we have, you have to learn three, four things. Printer is an output device. It gives the result on the paper. There are two types, impact and non-impact. Impact printers are those printers uh, uh, where you, ha uh, you have direct contact between print head and paper. Right, so you have a uh, contact between the paper with the printer, and non impact printers are those printers where you don't have contact between the paper and the printer. Now, let's see the laser printer. This is a non impact printer that uses laser technology to print text. So, it's a non impact pr uh, printer, meaning it does not come in contact with the paper and uses laser technology to print text on images on paper. It is expensive and gives the best quality output. The speed of the laser printer is measured in pages per minute, PPM, right? So pages per minute. Then you have the inkjet printers that mostly you have at homes. This is a non-impact printer that output text and uh, hmm. I think this is a, okay. Inkjet printers are a non-impact printer that outputs text and images by spraying ink on the pimp, uh, paper. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. The speed of this printer is measured in lines per minute (LPM). So first we had PPM in laser printer that is pages per minute, and in engine printer we have lines per minute. They are comparatively cheaper than laser printers, and the quality of output is a little lower. A little lower doesn't make a lot of difference next we have the dot matrix printer it is an impact printer the dot matrix printer is an impact printer that contains a movable print head with pins that strike the ribbon placing a dot on the paper these printers are very noisy less expensive and slow in work the speed of these printers is measured in characters per second that is cps right so you have learned about three printers laser printer, inkjet printer and dot matrix printer. The laser printer prints using a laser and is a non-impact printer. Inkjet printer sprays ink and is a non-impact printer and dot matrix printer is a impact printer and uh, uh, plots dots. Right? Finally, we have plotter and this chap- Oh no, we have projector also. Plotter. So plotter is used for printing vector graphics, visual charts, tables, and diagrams. So different types of plotters are. So on page number 14, you can see plotter. So a plotter is basically used for uh, data science, right? So to show uh, vector graphics, visual charts, tables, diagrams, etc, etc. So you have an inkjet plotter. It sprays small droplets of ink into a piece of paper, thereby creating an image. It sprays small droplets of ink into a piece of paper, thereby creating an image. Then you have the flat bed plotter. The pen or the inkjet moves in horizontal and vertical directions over a fixed horizontal flat surface on which the paper is mounted. So basically the pen or the inkjet moves in horizontal like this, 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 this direction over a fixed horizontal flat surface on which the paper is mounted mounted right pretty cool uh, you have seen these in offices and all 
uh, and then finally we have the drum plotter it uses a drum revolver to move the paper and the pen on the jets of the ink during the printing process the paper is placed over the drum which is then uh, rotated the pen then moves along the horizontal or vertical direction into the in uh, to print the output so plotter is not that important if you want to remember you can but other things are more important plotter i don't think will come if it comes it will only come for one mark or two marks that's it finally you have a projector you all know a projector or uh, projects or displays data of computer screen on a large screen or surface for audience right so you have them on uh, when you go on a mo uh, go to watch movies you have the projector projecting the movies uh, if you have a home theater the projector will project the movies and projectors you must ha you have seen in mostly in theaters right so pretty cool and this is how we uh, come to an end with the chapter chapter 1 of your book trackpad uh, class 6 So thank you guys I hope you like the video if you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one